We make it waves, 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 artists waves. We make it waves, 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 artists waves. All right, thank you, K-Bong. K-Bong with our theme music. Hello, everybody. My name is Jeff Gora. Welcome to Artist Waves Live interview series. Happy Friday to everybody. Hello, uh, Sand Dragons. Hello. Um, so a couple other names that I can't really see, but hello. Welcome from France. Hello, France. I love France. Um, <clears throat> my name is Jeff Gora. This is Artist Waves, as I said. And man, I think we have an amazing way to end the week today. Uh, something that I have been looking forward to, an interview I've been looking forward to for, for quite a while, and that would be Asia Volkman Reynolds. Um, her new group is called Two. You may know her from Nico Vega. And this, this group called Two is, is Asia and Dan from Nico Vega. And their record is out today, release day today uh, let's put it on in the background a little bit this is the newest single it's called in this rough and i gotta tell you something uh i gotta be 100 percent honest as i always am this record has blown me away uh incredible uh if you've been following that the the things aj has been saying about it and two has been posting about it in terms of where it's coming from it's um it's pretty remarkable and it says quite a bit so i think asia is here so why don't we talk about it Let's do this. I'm a slave, I've been played, and I don't know what to say. The words get away in my mouth, in my brain, the tears roll down. Why do you do? Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm just here. Let's see. I was going to, so it should be like this, right? Right on. Perfect. Hi. How are you doing? Oh my gosh, I'm good. I mean, this is just like, I've been waiting for this day for a while, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me, let me, uh, I'd be remiss if I did not say happy release day. Uh, oh, I love talking you. to artists on their, on their release day. I still feel like even in this digital age that it really means a lot, especially from artists that come from such a deep place. So um, I am stoked to talk to you today. Happy release day. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here. And um, yeah, it's just, it's actually really surreal because we've just been working up to this for so long and it's crazy that it's just out there now and I'm, I can kind of like let the bird fly out of the nest. I can imagine. Well, I can sort of imagine um, because I know it's, it's personal and it comes from such a, a deep place. And um, I gotta say, I just get right off the bat, this is, one of the best records I've heard in a long time. Like Aww. this connected with me so deeply immediately. Um, and I, and it doesn't always happen, but I, I would, I have to just tell you right away, I have been blown away. Thank you so much. What I've heard here and, and how deeply it's resonating and connecting and how strong the message is. Thank you so much. I mean, it makes me really happy. I feel like it's crazy when you're like that vulnerable to like express so much through an artistic platform, it is a little bit scary when you first like send it out there. And so it's been awesome to just see people connect kind of through their own experiences with the music. And I'm just like, it makes you feel like you're not an alien too. You're like, oh, my journal entry, I just shared it with the world and everyone was, was like, people were like, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I get it, you know? Well, yeah, I think right on. I think the, the thing, when I think about it, when I think about like what, um what has made me feel that way is there's like you've been saying you say you say a lot in the in the record even though it's it's concise and it, it punches you right away but yeah it's the delivery it's the delivery of the message it's how you and dan and how your vocals deliver the message in each song that really got me so like i feel like because i kind of come from a writing for an artist background perspective so like um I feel like anybody could write down their thoughts and you should, and some people do it well and some people do it in different ways, but how you deliver the message is a totally different thing. Right. right. So it's like the, the way your vocals project the message is just, uh, it's almost, I can't really put words to it. Like that's what, that's what it is to me that makes me say that. Oh, thank you. That's so awesome. 
Yeah, I mean, you can tell that it's, I mean, it meant a lot to you. And even, even in the studio, probably like in that moment when you're recording a vocal, like it probably meant a lot to you to lay it on tape or work. It does, yeah. It. Um, but you know, there's a rasp, there's an emotion, there's a, there's a right. melodic chill, there's everything. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I feel like um, part of the reason why it's so easy to connect to is because it is so incredibly personal. There's just like, it's, you know, I think every time I sing those songs, I feel so intensely where, you know, where it's all written from because it is so, it's just, it's on, it's honest, you know? So I think, um, and I love performing so much. So it's the closest I've been able to come to performing in a long time is just singing those songs on records and, you know, and writing those songs. And I get a lot of joy from that. So it does, it feels like it pulls a performance out of me, you know, when I really yeah. get, in, get to get into it. Well, I could, I could see that. And I mean, I think there was, I've always loved how you kind of, even like in an Instagram post of a, of a photo, you'll kind of tell the story behind the photo or at least why, right. why it's there, what it means to you. And right. it builds up with, with two. Um, you know, there were some lines where you're talking about this coming from the deepest place of your heart, where, is all, where there's light and darkness, mm -hmm. which connected, uh, I think, with me pretty deeply and a lot of people too. Um, but it gave, a, it gave a perspective and it gave an inside look as to like why and where and how. Um, so I, you know, I, it's just, it does, it says a lot. And the, even the name, knowing why you're called to, you know, like the, the feminine right. force behind two, which I, I have to admit, I didn't know that. I didn't know that numerically <laughs> there's, there's some symbolism there. Right. And it, but it's also, it just kept coming things about like the name and Dan and I working together. It was like, things were coming into alignment which really, it's like the name picked itself in a weird way because we kept trying all this other stuff and then it just kept getting whittled down to like two. And then it was just, it, it just also, you know, we used to have a threesome, like the band was a, was a trio. And so there was also just this simplicity of like, okay, now it's just the two of us, you know, and it's the masculine yeah. and feminine to represent like what we're sort of doing. And I think we both have like, you know, he's a very sensitive, intuitive person and I feel as though I'm also can be very like, we both have masculine and feminine traits. And so I feel like we bring a balance out of each other as well. You know, we work really sure. well together um, in projects. And I feel like um, everything about this has just come so smoothly. And part of it is because he's such a cheerleader for me. Like I've not, I've not, you know, had to fight to, to be myself at all through this process. It's like, he's constantly trying to pull things out of me. And it's, he's made me less afraid to share like the darkness and the light, you know, like, and I think that's sort of one of those things that we were, that's intimidating. It's like, it's hard sometimes to like, we don't want to share like the darkness because we're like ashamed or we live in shame because of it or something. But the reality is like, we all have both, you know, both. So it's kind of like the more honest we are, I feel like the more, the more healing it is, you know? Yeah, for sure. I remember, I, I totally, I totally get that. And I remember reading something about, something about the group and where the music was coming from and, and hearing the line, like expressing pain is equal to expressing joy. And it, from an artist's perspective, I'm like, that's a home run line. That's like, that's it. Right. right. Of course it is. And sometimes you express pain and it leads to joy and sometimes the other way around. Yeah. So I see that in this, in this record quite a bit. Um, so I, uh, I, I, I was curious too, though, like kind of taking a small step back, did when you got this idea for putting these songs together and even putting the record together, what came first? Was it like you and Dan saying, okay, the two of us want to write some songs and let's see what happens or was it like we have these songs with the songs come first you know it's interesting because i was going through a massive like separation in my marriage and i was really lost and i was fine i was writing all the time because i just didn't really have anywhere else to go and that is really where i go with pain and sometimes i get really complacent in my life and i don't write for periods of time because i'm just fine <laughs> i'm just like yeah. oh, i'm fine right now and and that's kind of how I process emotions. Um, 
it's my healthiest way of processing emotion, I should say, you know? And so I think um, when I was writing a bunch of this music, you know, Dan is always the first person to, I feel like, come in and like encourage the art and get excited about it and be, you know, so I started sending him these like little sound bites and demos and he was like on an airplane in like 10 minutes and was just like, we're doing this. And we started recording songs and then they started to kind of go through this different, you know, there was like hits and misses and things that were just, you know, I don't know, we were finding our groove and a lot of it was grounded in heartbreak at the time. And then I started to sort of heal and like things became more whole. And so that's in the music too. And I started to write from that place. And then it, it's like, the, I call it like going through the stages of grief and music because I sort of, and I landed in this place of like surrender and forgiveness. And then it was like really interesting because then I was like, well, which songs feel like they most express that part, like that section of the journey and how can this tell a story, you know? And I think what's interesting is through my separation, it's like, I think when you go through something ex extremely painful, it uproots all the like childhood traumas or things that you never dealt with, like little, you know, nuggets that you've held on to, but they get triggered by like current circumstances. And so then it kind of took me back, you know, into like my past and place, you know, little, you know, paralleled storylines that kind of started to develop into the music. And it was cool. Like it just kind of wrote itself, you know, and by the end, I mean, we have a ton more music that we're hoping to release and it's a constant journey because, you know, I might've been in such a place of heart, heartache and heartbreak, but like the music that I'm writing now feels very like grounded in surrender and forgiveness. And it feels just as relatable, but like maybe a little more um, for me, like resolved in my heart, you know? And, um, and so I think, that's kind of, that's sort of what the process was. And, and once we had this collection of songs, it felt like, oh, does it want to be a record or an EP? Or do, do we just not care about that? And let's just put this collection of music out, you know? And then we can kind of move on to the next chapter. And the, the next chapter might be like the second half of this chapter, or it might be longer or maybe even shorter. You know, it's just kind of what comes natural, I think. Right on. I. I subscribe to to most of all of that really in in terms of uh you know just how i how I kind of operate sometimes too, and then I also um in in the way I've connected with with these songs so I'm curious um the record starts with i know sequencing when you have a message this powerful is is really important um when you open with live forevermore it's such a unique opener in which <laughs> You're, you're 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 hitting it right away so with so much <laughs> melody, and then you also have this such a unique song. Um, but what I loved about it was that I kind of felt like, and maybe I was looking kind of too far into the big picture, that that was almost like the end at the beginning. If you look at it mm -hmm. personally, like if it were to be a documentary, for an example, like maybe this is you telling the story at the end about like what's about to happen or what's my journey right and, like i'm cool with it and i want to share it um and and it's very symbolic to two and all the meaning behind that is that i mean is that that's exactly about it and the funny yeah. part is because i talk <laughs> about the beginning in the beginning of the song it's like i was a little girl five years old yeah. and so that's kind of what for me it was, it was first off the chorus is like the message of the whole record, which is just basically like, for me, it, it's like, you can go through all stages of grief and emotion and, but ultimately you want to get to this place where you're sort of a witness of these things and not a victim of them. Because I think, does that make sense? Yeah, for, for me, sure. I, you know, that's where the strength comes from. It's like, Nobody can take away Asia, you know, as long yeah. as I don't give Asia away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if I'm, if I'm just the witness, like I'll live on forever. I'll just witness, you know, like, and I forgive you because you can't take Asia away, you know? 
And I and I'm witnessing your experience of life and maybe the vile or violent things you choose to do in this lifetime. I might, you know, I might wit I might observe those things and witness those things, but I don't need to claim those things. And I also don't need to hating for me is more painful. Anger was the destruction of me. Any kind of, you know, through my past, through my separation, being angry, like that was the very thing that was causing me pain. And the, the second that was gone was the second that I felt free. Like, oh, whew, I don't have to be angry anymore because the anger was, it was toxic, you know? And that's exactly what Live Forevermore is. So, and, and it's exactly what you said. When we got there, it was like, oh, this has to be the opener, you know? Yeah, awesome. Um, we actually have another song that we've kind of held back because I think it's gonna be getting some placements <laughs> at some point that is sort of the bookend to that. Okay. And I like have this fantasy of starting the next record with the bookend to this record. So we'll see, I don't know what'll happen, but like, I just have, I'm already like, you know. <laughs> right on, <laughs> love it. And then like about midway through the journey, maybe it's not exactly midway. There's like kind of exactly what you just said. There's, you can't take this song away from me. Right. right like that line is like okay uh, now exactly. we're at a turning point and now i've i've like i've maybe come to terms with what i'm dealing with and now i'm i'm coming at you where i'm gonna let it fly and yes uh, and that i mean it's such a strong line and i and i love it is it's no analogy it's like <laughs> and i do think that there's like a place for like also like going through all of that journey, it was hard for me not to also be angry at myself for things that I had done, like going through my entire life's journey, like times where I was angry and realized how much angry and realized how much destruction I had caused, like also coming to a place in life where you're just like in acceptance of the many phases that you're going to go through as a human and the mistakes that you're going to make and like the anger and that, you know what I mean? And I, yeah. I did feel like it was important to have songs on the record that took you through the journey. So it is, you know, on Phoenix, on the song you're talking about, like, there's, there's anger in that song. There's yeah. heartache. You can feel the loneliness. You can feel the person is at the bottom and they're rising up. Like, that is, that was important to me to put that in there because I do feel like that's, especially during this weird time right now, like, I have a lot of friends that identify with that song. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> because, you know, just learning how to rise up out of like whatever we're burning out right now, you know, um, and you're forced to sit with yourself right now. So there's a lot of that going on where it's like, ooh, I'm alone now and I'm I'm having to look look at all the things. You know? Well, yeah, it's funny you say that, too, because the, uh, the other line that I keep holding on to tightly is and it kind of speaks to like what you're saying about the, the current environment. Is, uh -huh. I need this all to die so that I can live. And I'm like, oh man, <laughs> that, that, yeah. right there. I mean, it's applicable to right now and it's applicable to even like the individual journey that we're talking about that you go through yeah. an artist or soul searching. Um, but that's another one. So that song in this rough, that was the turning point for me where it started to go from anger to forgiveness and yeah. surrender and release where it was like, man, what we've gone through is so beautiful. It's nobody's fault. You know what I mean? Like pull the knife out. There's nothing to forgive. Like just end this though. End the misery. Let's end the anger. Let's end the, the heartache and honor it by like not regretting it. Just moving forward from here on out and setting each other free or setting, setting this chapter free, you know? Yeah. And I think that that was a really important turning point for me. Like after that, I felt like all the music started to be more, it just, it felt more healing, if that makes sense. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I think the, the power of acknowledgement in this rough, I feel like is such a statement of acknowledgement, which is, mm -hmm. um, which is really kind of cool. And, and a special point, uh, obviously with the video backing it up too, it's, it's a pretty heavy moment. Um, but you mentioned too, like, Another thing that I think about is that there's like, it kind of goes to my initial point about your delivery. Like there are accents that I find that like accents that highlight certain songs that I'm like, mm -hmm. like that extra, like, you know, like, um, 
like it's, even if it's subtle, like the birds in the beginning, before you hear vocals, you hear birds in the back mm. of the opening track or a deep breath in, fr in front of uh, Woe Man. Woe Man, yeah. Or like, there's even like a yell in Crazy Love uh, after I think maybe one of the choruses. Yeah. Like, you know, like that's what I'm talking about in terms of delivery, like the accents highlight the emotion that much more. Yeah. Which you don't always find in places. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, I ask a lot about process because I just find the artistic process in certain records like this, especially at a time like now, is so fascinating and moving. And like you said, like you're talking about your own personal journey, <clears throat> which you're being so open and honest about. And that's one part of it. But then there's also like, well, maybe a lot of people can connect with that. And maybe a lot of people can relate to it or it can help them or, it mm -hmm. can, you know, just just be the power of music. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that's another take back uh, on my end that I've that I've really kind of been uh, blown away by. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, I feel like that's the whole thing. Like, there's one line on the record that for me is like one of the most important lines. And it's that um, honesty is not ugly, it's humanity's glue. Yes. And and that's one of the things I feel like we live in this culture where we do, we're kind of pushed to constantly put this like perf perfect thing forward, right? Because we live, we exist in, in like social media platforms and all these like, we're creating content all the time and we're so concerned about how things come across. And even I am guilty of that. Like I, I have moments where I'm like, you know, I don't want to post that picture. Like it doesn't, that look, I look like old and tired, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> and just all this. But the, but the truth of the matter is like, the more you see who someone truly is, the more you feel connected to them. Yeah. And I feel like that is our world that we live in. You know, I think that we have this idea that honesty is, or that, you know, putting it all out there or not, you know, just the vulnerability, like we, we protect ourselves because we feel like we need to. And, but I do think like we would all relate to each other so much more if we would just like talk about the pain. You know what yeah. I mean? Like talk about what you have gone through. Like, let's not pretend things are perfect. You know, I think Dan and I have, my husband and I have really gotten good at like um, being more open about us as people and like our relationship and stuff in terms of like, we definitely don't try to paint a pretty picture. And I think um, it's been really good for me, you know, and for us and for our kids, because I just, it's like this principle where we're like, you know, we're not, we're not always giving grueling details to people, but I feel like it's just like, yeah, marriages are hard. You know, family is hard. It's hard to raise kids and be a musician. It's hard to be a creative and like find yourself, you know, as a mother, it's like, you know, all, it's just all the different layers. And I do feel like, um, I just stand by that. You know, I think honesty is important. I do too, for sure. Especially now, especially in the arts and songs and stuff. And I'm curious, like, so from my perspective, like when you mentioned that line about um, humanity's glue, and I, I was like, honesty, I mean, that's, that's another example of it. That's just such it. But I'm thinking about like my process and I write a lot of articles and stuff too. Um, that's not like news or just original type of stuff. But anyway, I know that, Sometimes I'm so addicted to that and that, to that process of what we're talking about, of digging everything up and having it come from such mm -hmm. an authentic and genuine place, um, that sometimes it creates a slight procrastination. And what I mean by that is I know that it's going to, I know it's going to work out. I know it's going to be fine. I'm going to write what I want to write. It's not going to be writer's block but it's gonna like touch upon the darkness, the dark corners that I've maybe have touched upon, maybe I haven't. And yeah. also gonna dig up some really nice emotion and stuff and it's gonna throw it all together. And then it's like, well, who's gonna see it? Is anybody gonna see it? Who, do I care? Is, right. the artist, is the artist gonna connect with it? Are they gonna share <laughs> their fan group? Is nobody gonna see it? And I'm gonna be like, well, that was a, a waste. So <laughs> my, my point is in this very long winded question is that like, I get this procrastination because I'm aware of the hangover, the emotional hangover effect that I'm going to have for a little while. Mm -hmm. I'm, like, I'm like, wow, like that was a lot. Um, so do you ever have that? Did this happen with you? Like, does that make sense at all? 
you know, it's really interesting. I have like certain things and tools inside of myself. I identify with what you're saying so much because I think I've, been, I've dug through different, I've just been doing this also for a while, like since Nico Vega days where I would say something and then I delete it and then I'm rewrite it and yeah. like, oh man, did I offend people? And, or, and then you're like, why do I feel like crap after I just said all this, you know? And then why, you know what I mean? So, um, I have like tools inside, I feel like now that help me figure out how to craft something. One is like, I do have like a therapist who is like really pounded home with me. Like you need to get comfortable with like upsetting people. It's okay. Like when you're being honest and you're being who you are, it's just gonna happen. Like people, some people won't agree, you know? It's never my intention to like push people out, you know? Yeah. Um, and then the other tool that I, you know, I really believe strongly in the path of least resistance, which to me, that phrase is like my motto in life. It's the thing that runs through my head every single time I walk into like a hard spot in life. It, and what it means for me is it's like following the flow, the most natural current of my, in myself will take me to the next place. So it's kind of like when water is running down a mountainside and there's a rock it like go, finds a new path around the rock right but the water doesn't ever just stop unless it's like maybe there's a dam in the way and if that's the case like you feel that resistance if there's something in the way that you're like this i'm pushing the wrong thing right now <laughs> yeah. i am saying something that is hurting my own self you know and i've gotten really good at reading that internalness like as i'm typing if i feel anything resistance to anything I'm saying, I will be like, Oh, I'm not ready to say that. Or that's not really what I feel, you know, like, so I've gotten to the point where I don't have a lot of regrets about what I say anymore, because I'm really trying to practice that path of least resistance for myself, where I'm just finding that natural flow, you know, um, and it's taken so much work. But of course, there's still times where I say something, and I'm like, Oh, I shouldn't have said that, you know, or I shouldn't have done that. Or like, what did I write? You know, like, it still happens, but I feel like I'm getting better, I guess is all I mean to say, you know? Yeah, right on. That happens to me too. In fact, probably last week, now that I think about it, but then you like, you get to this point where you're like, you know what? Unsolicited sharing. Mm -hmm. It's unsolicited sharing, maybe, but if you break down that barrier, you know, things like pull the knife out can happen. So yeah, and it's ex an expression, right? Yeah. So like, who's for you to even judge yourself? Like, if you're feeling angry, and you write a really angry thing. <laughs> and then you have all this regret, because you're like, I wrote it out of anger. It's like, sometimes you also just have to be a human being that accepts that process. You know, because that's where it took that for you to get to that next place. And the other thing I was gonna say is humility is so good for for us. Like, making those mistakes is good and having to learn to apologize or, and we are living in a culture where there's just a ton of that right now. Yeah. And I think it's good for us. Like we're so afraid of it. We're afraid of being canceled. We're afraid of, but it's like, you know, you got to walk in. You just got to like, we got to evolve. We got to walk into it. We got to have more humility. We've got to like, not be afraid of that. You know, we got to teach our children. It's a, when you say, sorry, like it, you don't need to hide that. It's not a scary thing. Nothing's going to happen to you. You know, yeah, totally agree. Mm -hmm. and, and speaking of which, um, if you don't mind me saying, I like you have four four young children. Uh, oh yay! I also have twins that are probably similar in age. Oh my gosh! So, um, so there's yeah, there's a lot of similarities. <laughs> so we're probably going through the same like emotional roller coaster on a daily basis. <laughs> I think so. I think so. And and it's uh, it's lovely. And it, there's it's funny because. Um, I was listening to your record yesterday uh, again, and I have a Jeep and I have the, I had the top off the Jeep and, and um, my older two were with me and we were having a great time and I was playing the record and um, they love music and, and, I, and I, I explained to them what it was and it's coming out tomorrow and they, um, they were like, Dad, you can't play the music loud. People are going to hear it. It's not out yet. Like, you're, that's, you're, oh, that's yeah. <laughs> we're going to get pulled over. You can't do that. <laughs> my, my daughter is like kicking the seat. Like, no, I don't want to get pulled over. 
<laughs> that's amazing <laughs> oh my gosh that's that is like that's awesome yeah my my uh my oldest and i and i first his first show ever was uh two years ago imagine dragons and it's, it was one, oh, of wow. those, one of the most special moments of of uh of my life as well so um that is so cool yeah it was amazing um we're so but my my question on that is do your children ever from an artist's perspective, do they change your inspiration or do they lead to your inspiration sometimes? I find sometimes it does me and sometimes it also changes my perspective on how I receive music, yeah. uh, depending upon the messaging, but I'm curious about, about your perspective on that. Um, gosh, it's so, you know, it's really interesting that you ask that because I'm, as a mom, like still trying to kind of fuse the relationship of being a mother to like the relationship of being a musician and like having a musical, I don't know, like at home, for instance, I play a lot of peaceful music just to keep the environment peaceful. So my kids like don't really know the part of me that is like this fierce sort of rock chick woman, female force. Um, there's my youngest two are start like they love my record or my not my youngest two my my twins they love they love the music they're like always singing it um and but it's interesting because i feel like i kept it separate and for a long time and it was kind of a mistake that i made um it's so it's so deep for me because i think when i had arrow my my oldest and i was in nico vega and things were really hard. Like we didn't have any money and I was struggling with the music and, you know, Imagine Dragons was just starting to like, I think their EP had just go gone to radio <laughs> and um, it was just a struggle. Like I was scared. I was like, I, I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to do music the way that I know I, I need to do it. But I also was like, I had this burning desire to be a parent, you know, yeah. that was like, I wanted to give, arrow everything and i also just didn't know how to like have be the liberated sort of female force that i had been before in music and <clears throat> so it's been such a process and that's i think what is the most um important part of this this ep that we're putting out is that it's it's kind of me reclaiming that in a way that i'm really proud of and it's taken me a long time to get there you know um because it's been hard for me to f see how to be sort of this dominant female force and be very maternal. And like, I'm, I have four kids now, so I'm just constantly working on that balance, if that makes sense. Yeah. And so um, it's just a really interesting question because it brings so much up for me. And I think it's just because it's been hard for me to figure out how to like, what my relationship is to music given now that I'm a parent. So much easier for Dan. I feel like my husband, and I'm not sure why, maybe because it came out of such need. As soon as Imagine Dragons started to take off it, we were just like, go, do it. We need this, oh you gotta do this. Like, so it was different. With Nico Vega, it was a fight. It was like a salmon swimming upstream all the time. Like we weren't making money and it just was, you know, then we kind of like, when we finally started like getting success, it was like, it was like a little bit too late for me to like, does that make sense? It was, yeah. it was just hard for me to then, I, my life was different. So now I'm carving out a new path that feels easier, I guess, and more fitting, you know? Yeah, I can see that. I, I, I totally respect that. And, and sometimes, you know, I could, you could see the, the, the way that your thought process and, and, and your creative process can maybe influence or inspire the next generation. I think it's, uh, it's invaluable. So thank mm. you for sharing that. Um, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but we've had a lot of really nice feedback and like comments and thumbs up in Italy and Turkey and France and like, all <laughs> other countries awesome. that have been so kind to join us. Um, before I ask this next question, is it okay with you if we solicit maybe a question or two from everyone who's joining in? I could just pick one out of the comments that is relevant to what we're Do talking it. about. Yeah, uh, let's go for it. I'm, so I'm in. Listening in has wants to partake in a, in a small, uh, short Q&A while we have, it, um, we have another minute or two. 
fire something in the comments and we will uh, we'll rock and roll here. But um, so while that is happening, I'm going to ask you, um, what is, you mentioned some other songs and maybe a next chapter. Um, do you foresee when, I don't know if it's live stream or when, you know, the world opens up a little bit and gets better to being a, um, a musical act that's going to tour, be on the road, play live shows. Is that something you thought about? I mean, I, we would both love to get back on a stage, you yeah. know? <clears throat> um, and I'm sure as soon as it's like warranted and everybody feels good about it, or we create a platform where people can do that. Like we will be, we'll be first in line. <laughs> and I just think um, both he and I just love it so much. You know, I don't know if you saw the, in this rough video, but that was the first time I felt like I had been on a stage and we were on that rooftop together, yeah. the two of us. And it was like, I just remember looking over at him at Dan on the drums and him looking back at me and us just being like, <sighs> It's like, it was just like, there you are. I know you. To both of us. Like I even felt that way towards myself. I was like, oh my gosh, there you are, you know? Um, so I'm excited because I do think like the stage, like the platform of the stage really for me feels as if it's the place I'm most free to express myself because there's this, you know, place carved out for it where people are like, okay, what are you going to do? They like, you get up there and you, it's like, you got to start like emoting immediately. And that's like, you know, I think I spend a lot of time in my life, like pulling that back. And on stage, it's like, <laughs> floodgates can open, you know? So. Right on. Well, it's cool that a stage, I, I love the video and it's, it's cool that uh, literally a roof is maybe one of the first stages that this is projecting out on for you. Mm -hmm. Very, um, very applicable right on so uh, cool so one question i got that that was just sent in that i thought was really cool uh we've touched a little bit about it but not completely it's about the writing process of two came from jake lily 10 that looked like um jake lily 10 yes they asked what was the writing process for some of these songs in terms of like instrumentation did you start with drums guitars did you write melodies first uh, i'm sure it was a bit different but yeah the writing process um most of the writing process would be like me sitting with an acoustic guitar and sort of plunking out a song and writing like, I usually just write everything in one sitting, like the, the uh, emotional dialogue and, um, and the melody. And then it's usually needs to kind of be in one sitting because that's when I'm in the thought and it kind of just comes so easily. I know you're a writer. So like you probably have that experience sometimes when you're like, really just feeling it and the flow is happening and if you have to stop that and then you come back to it like days later you're like it's hard to jump back into that like space and really feel authentic about it so I kind of try to just do it all at once and it usually happens very quickly and then but it'll be like well I wrote this to like three guitar chords sometimes I'm just plunking guitar chords out just so I can like get a thought out Okay. And so I'm not really paying attention to like the music at all. And then I send it to him and he's just like, then instantly thinking of like, Ooh, the direction we should go with this, you know, like all of those songs started out more like, you know, the, the basic acoustic version of like live forever more type of thing. So mm -hmm. if you can imagine in this rough on an acoustic guitar, you know, and right. then I give it to Dan and he's just like, okay, this is a rock anthem. Like this is a female, like, this is a breakup song, you know? And so we're going to take it all the way there. And, and that's really been fun because then he, you know, kind of gets to mess around and do all this cool stuff and, and send it back. So for the most part, that's how we write. The one exception on this record was faces. He and someone worked together and crafted that music and sent it to me. And I was like, this is so good. Done. Wrote the song, sent it back that day. And it was just like, perfect for us you know so um that's kind of how it works and then he has a, a little studio at his house so before quarantine when we could still like hang out all the time i would like go over there and cut some vocals in his little studio and we would just like it was just really fun it was cool it was natural you know so um and then he'll kind of bring in different guitar players okay. and like he does most like he can play guitar and so can i too though so we play around with that and um he's a fantastic drummer obviously but he's also good at like 
he produced everything. So I'm really proud of him for that because I think for years, like you get in your head that you're good at only one thing and you're like, that's my safe space. I can't do this other thing. I'm not, I'm not professional at it, you know? And so it took a while to get him like the courage to just, I was like, you're good at this. Like you're a great producer. It's awesome. And then when he was finally sending songs out to mixers and they're like, who produced this? And he was like, me? <laughs> <You know? laughs> it was so good for him to like finally see that like it was like up to, you know, the bar. Like it was like good enough to just fool people. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, love it. And, love it. Yeah. Yeah. I know you guys did a lot of it yourself and uh, there's a lot of labor of love, a lot of love in the labor. So yeah, guys do, right on. Thanks for, thanks for sharing Thank the you. process. I love that part. Um, so the last one I, uh, I thought that was, was pretty interesting, pretty deep, if you don't mind me sharing. I forgot the person's name that came through your, your screen name. I pro uh, my apologies, but your question was really good. It was something along the lines of when you are writing something that's so personal um, and you're talking about maybe relationships that you've had or you're in, do you think about or do you share with the person, the other person, or worry about their impact? Um, when you're writing or or whether or not you want to release the song to the like world. if it's gonna hurt them or something yeah. yeah i think that was the i think that was the intent of the question so. yeah i mean of course like yeah. when i think of my husband like it's hard because you know i'm like well people know who i'm talking about half the time when it's about him but then some of the songs on the the ep aren't about him you know and yeah and so it is kind of this muddy thing because I think people will assume even the ones that aren't about him are about him. Right. <laughs> but, you know, it's the same vice versa. Like he's in probably one of the biggest bands in the world. And <laughs> and I can come across in some of those songs as a pretty, <laughs> there's just, I have a lot of personalities in his music too. So, <laughs> so I think at this point we both, it goes both ways. We both just kind of know, like, especially in our dynamic, like, we're going to be honest. We're going to talk about things. It's not all, but it's also this, this moving, like our marriage is very strong because I feel like we work, we do a lot of work and we are, we go through those, you know, we ride those waves. We surf those waves together. And um, for the most part, you know, sometimes I will tell someone else like, Ooh, I wrote this song about your guys's relationship because I just kept, couldn't stop thinking about it. Like it just came out. It was like the scenario and I'll tell the person. And, but usually it's like, for the best I think because music is so healing so I feel like it's easy to identify with and I can also be someone in my relationship with my husband who like buries my hurt and so when it comes out through music sometimes I think it's good for him to know how I'm feeling based on something that I wrote and for the record, we do also sometimes have to say before we play a song for each other, like, this is not about you. <laughs> <laughs> so can you, he has to say that to me like all the time, because <laughs> I'll be like, oh my gosh, how could you, <laughs> you know? But um, so yeah, there is a little bit of that and we're sensitive to it, but also like pretty used to it, you know? Right on. See, honesty is the glue that holds it all together. Big it picture, does. Small picture, it it's does. right on. Well, it's so inspiring too. It's, it really is. And um, the, the art is inspiring, but even more so it's the intent, the, you know, the intent is so inspiring. So, um, and moving in a time where there cannot be enough inspiration, you know, yeah. in a time where there a surplus of inspiration is welcomed, I think to everybody everywhere. So yeah. um, appreciate you being so open and honest. And the last thing I'll say um, or ask is kind of coming full circle. It's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like my live forever more where you're talking about the end at the beginning, maybe. And I'm, I'm curious. I always kind of end with this. It's release day. Um, the record's out. It's obviously impacting so many people in a positive way. And I know it means obviously so much to you, but what does it mean to you? If you were to say in this moment, what, what this record means to you, what this day means to you, how do you, how do you capture that? Oh man. I think it's just like such a re it is a release in so many ways. It's like it's a, it's a musical release, but it's like a release too because I think um it's just 
you know, you, anytime you have like creativity bubbling inside of you and it's like kind of this pent up force and stuff, like I just, you feel like this volcano that's about to erupt. And so there's a little bit of pressure and stress and, and like all that, like is going on, you know, leading up to it. You're like, Oh, I got to do this photo shoot. I got to do this. I got to write this. I need to, how am I going to do this during COVID? Like, (laughs) and then the eruption happens the artwork flows, you know, everything starts to come out and you're just kind of like, you know, in other ways, it is just the beginning. <laughs> so, cause we have a lot of work to do with the record and it's gonna, it's hard to get things, you know, people to hear things or listen to things and make that impact. And um, so now our focus is going to be to word of mouth, hopefully get this thing out there and hopefully like, you know, get, have some sort of a radio campaign that we're going to hopefully self fund. I uh, had some success last year with, um, you know, co-writing on one of the Imagine Dragons songs for the last record. And now I have this little bubble of like funds dedicated to music that I can just kind of hopefully put into this project. So that's awesome because it's, it's expensive to make videos. It's, and we're not, we don't want to sign a record deal right now. So like, you know, doing it all ourselves is just a lot. And I feel like music is fueling itself and I'm, you know, so it feels good and I feel excited about the future and I'm just like ready to, ready to roll. All right. Right on. That's awesome. And, and we're, uh, we're ready to, we're ready to roll with you. So uh, two music is out and it is uh, immediately impacting. So I won't keep you any longer. Um, I really appreciate you taking all this time. It was so nice to meet you and so nice to speak with you so open and and honestly. Um, Congratulations. uh, And thanks for thanks for all you guys do. Thank you so much. And thank you for your support. Right on. Thank you. Take care. Have a great rest of your release day. Thank you so much. I will. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Bye. Bye. All right, that was Asia Volkman Reynolds. Artist Waves is a voice of the artist platform. And that's a pure 100% definition of voice right there and an artist making waves. So um, awesome record, pull the knife out. It's amazing, out today. Uh, it was really great to speak with Asia. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Thanks for all the questions, the comments, um, all of the engagement. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I certainly did. Uh, Asia shared a lot of really awesome information behind an awesome record. So uh, I think it's happy hour um, and have a great weekend. Stay safe. Thank you. Hi, Maddie and Duke. I see you. Bye, everybody.